Our nation is rooted in a few core beliefs, upholding the rule of law, ensuring non-corruptibility and meritocracy, fostering racial harmony and an inclusive, fair and just society, and always thinking ahead for future generations. These beliefs have kept us together and taken us forward, leading to national priorities, policies and programs that have benefited generations of Singaporeans. After more than 50 years of nation building, one imperative is growing in importance, and that is sustainable development. Climate change is an existential threat of our times, bringing rising sea levels and extreme weather patterns, putting millions of lives and livelihoods around the world in danger. Singapore, as a low-lying island state, is particularly vulnerable. We embraced sustainable development decades before climate change became a critical global priority. Today, Singapore is a city in a garden and is one of the greenest cities in the world. We set aside large nature reserves with about a third of our island covered by trees. We knew public cleanliness and hygiene were important to prevent diseases in our hot and humid urban environment and took tough measures to enforce them. We are the only country in the world to freeze the growth of our vehicle population. We are one of a few countries to have closed its water loop and to reuse every last drop of water. We moved significantly away from coal-generated power many years ago. We do not subsidize the use of fossil fuel and in fact, we tax the emission of carbon. We will continue to build upon this strong foundation and launch a sustainable development movement for a better and greener future. This will strengthen ongoing efforts to implement our commitments under the UN's 2030 Development Agenda. This 10-year plan is called the Singapore Green Plan 2030, or in short, the Green Plan. The Green Plan is a whole of nation sustainable development agenda with firm action plans touching almost every dimension of our lives. But we recognise our challenges. Being a small city-state, we are in a very different situation compared to bigger countries. We need to provide for defence, industries, homes and critical infrastructure, all within our 728 square kilometres of land. We do not have the natural resources, land area and climatic conditions for the large-scale deployment of renewable energy sources. These constraints make it extremely hard for us to achieve net zero emissions in the same way that bigger countries can pledge to do. However, just like how we confronted many national challenges in the past, we can turn our constraints into strategic opportunities and be pioneers in technological and policy solutions for sustainable development. We can be a living laboratory which other cities around the world facing similar challenges can pick up ideas from. Depending on the results of our collective actions and that of the international community, we will review our current carbon emission commitments and seek to achieve net zero emissions as soon as we can. That way, we can punch above our weight and have a positive environmental impact well beyond our shores. In this video, we present to you the key programs of the Green Plan. Some of the initiatives will be familiar to you, others will be new. By 2030, Singapore will be a green and beautiful city in nature. We will set aside 50% more land, around 200 hectares, for nature parks. Every household will live within a 10-minute walk of a park. We will plant 1 million more trees across our island, which will sequester another 78,000 tonnes of CO2. Singaporeans will enjoy cleaner air and cooler shade. With more green spaces, there will be more wildlife amongst us, from migratory birds and hornbills to otters and mouse deer. But some animals like wild boars and monkeys may get into conflict with people too. We will work with communities and NGOs to develop programmes to allow people and wildlife to live in harmony. Sustainability is also about you and me and the way we live. We aim to be a zero-waste nation powered by a circular economy 
with a high rate of recycling so that our precious resources can be used many times over. We have already closed our water loop by recycling our used water to make new water. We will make a similar strong push towards secularity in waste materials to transform trash to treasure. We will turn incinerated waste into new sand and use this for construction. We will build up Singapore's recycling capabilities by sorting better and reducing contamination. By 2030, we aim to reduce the waste sent to our landfill by 30%. We will front load our efforts over the next five years to achieve a 20% reduction by 2026. By 2030, our MRT network will be comparable in coverage to major cities like London and New York City. We will develop new town concepts such as Tengah, which will have the first car-free HDB town centre with roads constructed underground, freeing up surface spaces for public transport, activities and green spaces. At the same time, we will encourage walking, cycling and active mobility. We have announced the plans to expand the cycling network. We will actively do more to repurpose roads and implement pedestrianisation wherever possible. Today, of all trips taken, 64% are on mass public transport, that is, bus and MRT. All these efforts will raise this modal share to 75% by 2030. These environmentally friendly habits will take time to take root in our society. We must inculcate them early in our young, through education. We will start an eco-stewardship program involving all schools from primary to pre-U levels. As part of the program, we aim to reduce carbon emissions from the school sector significantly. We will get some of our schools to be carbon neutral by 2030, with the rest to follow thereafter. We will also use a new science centre at Jurong Lake District to help bring lessons on sustainability to life. We will help our students learn how to reduce their carbon footprint, make responsible decisions, and create a ripple effect on their families and friends. This expands the scope of our values in action education with sustainability as a key part of the curriculum. We want every student to understand, live, and practice sustainability. Geographical constraints limit our options for renewable energy. We do not have great rivers for hydropower. We have neither land or sea space for large solar or wind farms. Despite these challenges, we will strive to use cleaner energy and become more energy efficient. We have shifted to using natural gas which is the cleanest fossil fuel. We will quadruple our solar energy deployment by 2025, such as by covering the rooftops of HDB blocks with solar panels. By 2030, solar energy deployed will be five times that of today. We are also looking to tap green energy sources from the ASEAN region and beyond through electricity imports and hydrogen. We will invest in water research and development to half the energy required to produce desalinated water. By this year, with floating solar panels on reservoirs, all our local water works will be powered by solar energy. Our waste treatment facilities such as Tuas Nexus will generate more energy than they consume. We already host the largest biodiesel plant in the world, which is being further expanded. As an aviation and maritime hub, Singapore will play active and important roles in fulfilling two international goals. In aviation, 2% improvement in fuel efficiency every year from now to 2050 and carbon neutral growth from 2020. In maritime, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from international shipping by at least 50% by 2050 compared to 2008 levels. We can also use 15% less energy in HDB towns by 2030 through measures such as the widespread use of smart LED lights and solar energy. And beyond HDB towns, we will green 80% of all buildings 
over the next decade and develop eco-friendly districts as demonstration projects that we can scale up, such as the Jurong Lake District. Singapore's urban environment makes us an ideal city for adopting electric vehicles or EVs. We have declared our Vision 2040 to phase out internal combustion engine vehicles and have all vehicles run on cleaner energy. To get there, we will require by 2030 all newly registered cars to be cleaner energy models. We will more than double our EV charger targets from 28,000 to 60,000 by 2030. We will tap the capabilities of the private sector to build up this infrastructure. We will also revise the vehicle tax structure to make it easier to buy and to own EVs. All these efforts in industries, residential estates, commercial buildings, private transport will reduce our energy consumption by more than 8 million megawatt hours per year. This is the annual energy use by almost all households in 2030. And this will in turn reduce domestic greenhouse gas emissions by at least 3 million tonnes per year by 2030. As sustainability grows in importance and consumers pivot towards greener and more sustainable products and services, it can become a key competitive advantage for us and present new opportunities for growth and job creation. We are therefore seeking new investments that are among the best in class in terms of carbon and energy efficiency. We introduced a broad-based carbon tax in 2019. Whatever we collect will be invested and used to support worthwhile projects to help enterprises reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. The government will introduce a new enterprise sustainability program to help enterprises especially SMEs, to embrace sustainability and develop capabilities in this area. We can be a leading carbon trading and services hub, which is projected to be a multi-billion dollar industry. We will create new and diverse job opportunities and our vision is to be a leading centre for green finance in Asia and globally. We will also promote homegrown innovation under the Research, Innovation and Enterprise Plan 2025 and attract companies to anchor their R&D activities in Singapore to develop new sustainability solutions for Asia and the world. These include decarbonisation technologies such as carbon capture, utilisation and storage, low carbon, hydrogen and solutions to enhance energy efficiency and enable a circular economy. Jurong Island will be a model for the adoption of such solutions as it transforms into a sustainable energy and chemicals park. Against rising sea levels, we are developing new solutions and a better understanding of our coastlines. We will put in place the physical defences to protect our coastlines along the East Coast, around Lim Chu Kang, Sungai Kadut and Jurong Island. Lying one degree north of the equator, Singapore will always be hot and humid. But we don't want temperatures to be unbearably high. Urban heat is all around us. For example, the kind that you feel while standing behind an air conditioner. We will moderate the rise in urban heat by increasing greenery and piloting the use of cool paint on building facades. We are increasing local food production to make our food supply more resilient. We have announced our 30 by 30 target to produce 30% of our nutritional needs by 2030 locally. We will do this in partnership with a vibrant agri-food industry and our communities. The Green Plan is a living plan which will evolve as we engage Singaporeans through Singapore Together to harness more ideas and put them into action. Every one of us can play a part and help seize the moment to transform our nation. In 1965, shortly after Singapore became an independent nation, Mr Lee Kuan Yew said, over 100 years ago, this was a mud flat, swamp. Today, this is a modern city. Ten years from now, this will be a metropolis. Never fear. Having come from mud flats to metropolis, we will turn our metropolis into a global city of sustainability. This metropolis of ours will be a bright green spark 
inspiring the world and our future generations. Let's work together for a brighter and greener future.